Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Transatlantic number SF-RP951-TUL is what this is. This is a reinforcing plate. There are different types of reinforcing plates on the market and how they differ really is the positioning of the mounting holes is really the difference that I can tell because they're always use well there's two things they're always using a four and a half inch hinge uh, so the template pattern of the screw holes will be for a four and a half the two things the location of the mounting screws and the offset will be different okay so how to know if this is the one you need I'm just going to show you all of the dimensions a steel plate weighs about 0.37 pound uh, zinc coated for corrosion resistance here come some dimensions Overall length, 8 inch. Overall width, where the hinge will sit, inch and an eighth. The mounting area, just shy on 1 inch. Now, all eight of these holes are tapped 1224, uh, the same as a standard uh, template machine screw that you'll see on a hinge. The thickness of the reinforcement is 0 0.156. 0 0.156. Now the question is, what is the offset? Well, the offset is the dimension from where it's going to mount to the inside of the probably aluminum frame to the face of the hinge, where face of the hinge plate where the hinge will sit. That offset needs to be calculated based on the thickness of the material and how thick the hinge is. So, let's tell you the offset. It's going to be somewhat approximate. Looks like it's about 40 thousandths of an inch. 40 thousandths from here down to here. Let's try that again. Yeah, 40 thousandths is pretty close. So if your material thickness is an eighth of an inch, 0.125 and then this is 40 thousandths from here to here now you've got 0.165 if you're putting a hinge in there that's 134 thousandths that's probably going to be pretty good because you're going to lose 10 thousandths between each margin for material not being perfectly flat that sort of concept but now you but now you know the calculation if you're installing this down to something that's um, 16 gauge which is about 60 thousandths 60 thousandths plus 40 thousandths is only going to get you to 100 thousandths. So that hinge is going to stand proud of the frame, of the hollow metal frame, if you were going to weld this in. So this offset is not enough for that sort of application. You're really going to see this in aluminum storefront, and I would base this 40 thousandths offset to be pretty much what you would need um, for that application. Okay, I'm going to give you a little backstop scenario here. That is likely going to be uh, something that you'll use to gauge to the inside or to the face to the pull side face of the frame itself um, and at that point uh, you will either remove these screws and attach your new plate or you're going to drill the holes in those locations for your mounting uh, screws um, I'm going to give you those locations now actually Okay, so they are actually shown in the image down below. So let's now switch to the screen view where we can take a closer look at the supporting documentation. Yeah, they're shown here. So just to verify them on camera. Okay, so before we switch, they're telling us that the that this hole, the, the two holes nearest the absolute end are seven inch on center. My tape measure tells me that's correct. And then five and a half inch to the other, to the inner holes, so to speak. And I would say that that would be spot on as well, five and a half inch. Let's switch to the screen view now and take a closer look at some supporting documentation. Here is the item that we are looking at. And let's take a look at the 
Uh, I have some photographs that we can take a look at, and let's do that here. Showing the tapped area. Admittedly, I'm not quite sure why these are dimpled areas in, in these holes. Um, it might have everything to do with the wall thickness of the frame being insufficient to accommodate the entire um, head of the screw. And what I mean by that is, you know, you've got your screw, it'll be undercut. It'll be an undercut head rather than that going all, you know, being a flat head screw. And what I imagine that dimples for is because this dimension is probably greater than an eighth of an inch. That's probably why those are dimpled like that, would be, would be my guess, is why those are like that, okay? 1224 threads in the uh, screw itself, in the plate itself for the hinge, the back side of it, okay? Now, let's look at the supporting documentation. There is a somewhat um, reasonably legible image that's here. This reinforcement plate is designed to bring extra security and stability to the surface mounted hardware of commercial doors. Plates are intended to be used as a backing plate for four and a half inch standard butt hinges on most doors. Well, what that means is these locations are in what we call the template location. If we pull up a template on a hinge, we're going to see the locations. Okay. And sure enough, this is this is where everything's going to line up. This is a four and a half inch bomber hinge. This is the template location. This hinge and any other hinge made to the template pattern will uh, fit our hinge plate. Reinforcing plate, the 951 TUL model, and I, I understand that the letters really talk about the location of the mounting holes. Uh, it's a backing plate. You'll need it for aluminum storefront. It increases sag resistance. Sure, it's just without this, your door won't hang. Ideal for use on wood, hollow metal, aluminum. I'm not so sure about any of that except aluminum. Um, you can make it work with hollow metal. You're going to have to increase the offset. That's just going to be, you know, bending the plate. Plates are 3 sixteenths. I thought it was a little shy on that myself. Yeah, a little shy. 158. Um, so about 30,000 shy. Sold by the each. 1224 hinge screw related product. Sure, if you need some self-tapping screws, here they are. Just a link to those. Now, the product brochure. This is a relic. This is certainly an outdated catalog for storefront hardware from Transatlantic after Global had purchased Transatlantic from the Philadelphia group of ownership or family of ownership. And in this catalog, you're going to be able to pull up the different models. And sure enough, as you go from a TUL, this is an RP, reinforcing plate 951, a T, this 951 TUL, seven and five and a half, 6.197 and 4.433 and you get the picture they're all different that are here every single one of them so which one you need is going to be based on quite frankly you measuring those mounting hole locations and that will dictate what is required now there's also a link to the reinforcement plates document here same document it's just the cut sheet is all it is so we've really got a product brochure and then the cut sheet on the reinforcing plate. Okay, that's simply stated what it is. There's a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the transatlantic products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. Let's wrap up this video on camera.
I'm a person who has uh, years of experience when it comes to hollow metal doors and frames and architectural wood doors. Um, and I'm quite partial to the hollow metal industry because I believe in the integrity of the product line, the durability, the long lasting inherent nature to steel doors and frames. Everything is welded together. If you're concerned about it rusting, order it galvanized. Galvanized substantially by orders of magnitude increases the life expectancy of hollow metal. Um, hollow metal's only, you know, understood drawback is the lines aren't as clean, meaning when you bend hollow metal, there's going to be a press break. Well, the tooling on that press break has a definite dimension, so you're never going to get a crisp, hard outside corner like you do in aluminum, which is extruded. That's number one. Plus, hollow metal typically is larger dimensions, two-inch face, where aluminum storefront can be inch and a half. Well, so can hollow metal. Um, but nonetheless, the advantages to me of hollow metal are clear and obvious. A dis that it's more in there's more integrity to the product uh, because of how it's created, what it's made of, and how it's assembled. Um, the downside for aluminum storefront, and probably why you're buying this, is because everything is mechanically held together. Doors rely on screws. Screws come loose. Very often clients will call and say, I don't know what happened. I heard a clank and my hinge plate fell into the into the frame. Literally, the screws got so loose that this just fell into the frame. And because the frame is, is aluminum, I've said, well, tie a magnet down to a string and see if you can fish it out. Now, just send me a new one. Got it. That happens all the time. You'll very often, if an aluminum door, you, you know, the casual person won't ever notice it until the door doesn't close. And then upon inspection, you'll realize, you may realize that that's the problem. The hinge plate has come loose. So if you're using this material, use thread lock. Um, at every single time on every single piece that's in an aluminum storefront opening. But that's why people buy these. They do occasionally bend or uh, cause damage when someone has put a wedge into the door and the door has been pushed. That will bend something. Usually the aluminum is going to suffer first, but these plates do come loose. They do get broken, you know, things of that nature. Or people are doing a new installation. They're, they're building some sort of custom frame and they want to buy these. Now we just did a job for a client in Canada where they needed 24 hinge plates, but steel for hollow metal, and the reason we used a different manufacturer's preparation is because they needed the particular offset for the particular heavyweight hinge they were using. None of these plates by Transatlantic are going to be meant for a hinge that's 180 thousandths um, thick. So that offset would not be nearly great enough. And they didn't want to get into bending these over. That's dreadful. So what we did was we brought in the 24 plates for the heavyweight hinges. We created a fixture. We drilled these four holes. We then tapped all four of those holes on all 24 of them um, in a uniform location so the client could then have his own custom mounting plates, use his heavyweight hinges on whatever the frame was he was installing it to. I, I don't know. Or actually... I don't think it was aluminum, I think it was steel, but they were still going to screw them together because they couldn't weld the material. Uh, I think where it was at, that area could not suffer a welding operation being done there. I think that's what it may have been. Okay. Now the name Transatlantic goes back decades, several decades, for sure the 1970s. And uh, owned by some, I'm not really sure, I always knew Donna might have been her name from Transatlantic. Uh, boy, forgive me. It may have been Donna. Um, I don't think so. Well, anyway, there was the primary sales rep that we had for our area, Transatlantic, the 1970s, 80s, the 90s when I started working with them, the 2000 at some point. Those owners sold the company to Global. Global is another name that you might know, door closers. If you've looked at a door closer, it very likely says Global on it. Global owned Transatlantic. Well, they created a, another company called Imperial or Imperial USA. Transatlantic and Global product lines were underneath, uh, are underneath Imperial. Um, Transatlantic's product offering back in the 90s was that thick. I really ri wish I had one of their old catalogs. I have sections of it uploaded, um, but not the entire scanned catalog. That was way before we were scanning catalogs. 
or, or PDFs were created. The point of saying all of this is that that's the history of this name Transatlantic or TACO, T-A-C-O. In Chicago, it'd be very common for a client to call you, and I need a TACO panic device. They mean Transatlantic Company is what they mean. Anyway, we miss those days. If there's any questions on the Transatlantic, or let's just say TACO, SF-RP951-TUL reinforcing plate, or any other Transatlantic product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.